Hey all, welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Channel. I'm Darren. Today I've got something really different, really new. Something I have been waiting to uh, check, check out here. This is the Cinder Intelligent Smart Grill Griddle. And I got this to play around with. I'll be right back. Smoking, grilling, getting hot and hotter, sous vide and chilling from fire and water. Alright guys, if you haven't heard of the Cinder Grill, and what this is, this is brand spanking new and I'm showing you because I just want to let you show you that this hasn't been used by me yet. This is supposed to be something that is comparable to sous vide cooking, but it is more like a George Foreman grill. These two plates on here actually cook the food to within one degree of the temperature. So you can actually cook this at 131 for four hours like you would in a sous vide on the grill and then you could also sear it remove it from the uh, grill pat it dry this heats up to 450 degrees you put it back on the grill to sear all using an app or the uh, control button right here so since I just got this thing haven't even turned it on yet just got it out of the box just arrived yesterday I'm gonna cook on this um, tonight I'm gonna to actually make some mahi mahi on here and see how this thing works on a low cook but I just downloaded the app so your app is Android or iTunes or, or Apple and you can get it on your phone or your iPad I just happened to download it on my iPad so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this thing on and see if we can get it hooked up because, like I said, this is kind of like your Wi-Fi sous vide controllers where it has an app with recipes, you can control your temp, and all that from the app. So, so I am going to actually try to hook up my app with it right now. And I'm going to see if you guys can see this. So, try to get there and you see that's got the little C. Okay, so as soon as I turn it on, it found my cinder here. So let's turn your cinder on, find the list below. So I click that, I can name it. It looks like you need the first time, so you need to use the cinder, why not give it a name? So I'm gonna say, Darren's Cinder. Save, okay. So with that, pretty much gives me what the uh, temperature of the grill is. So it's saying it's 81 degrees for some reason maybe it's a little hotter in there than it should be <laughs> 78 degrees here so it's got a little food guide so you can pick the kind of food you want let's just say I want fish dun, dun, dun. produce seafood let's say let's just say halibut for the halibut okay so then it gives you the options of how you want it cooked, just starting to flake tender, very moist, moist, flaky, and firm. Let's just put it in the middle, and it tells me I should cook it at 130 degrees. And you see at the bottom, it's got a little begin cooking button. So it's pretty easy. Not a lot of uh, things you have to choose or pick. You can actually, it has a little option here to tell you if it's frozen, because it'll add some time to the cook, I guess, if it's frozen. Pretty cool, I'm not gonna hit begin cooking because I got nothing in there right now. I'm gonna play around with this. Before I do some cooking on it so let me uh, wash it up a little bit I want to make sure I can clean the, the plates and stuff before I start cooking on this thing and maybe play with it a little bit more so I'll be right back guys all right guys I got so uh, we're gonna cook up some fish with the cinder here I got my mahi mahi cut up and ready to go I'm just going to lightly season it with some of the running wild seafood seasoning. Not too much. There you go. That's probably good right there. I don't want it to overpower the fish. 
Okay, I turned the power on. I got my iPad here with my Cinder app. And I'm just going to use, I guess we could just use COD. And I wanted it very moist and tender and flaky. So I'm going to do 132. And I'm going to go ahead and uncheck the frozen because it's not frozen. I'm going to kick the begin cooking. And it's telling me it's empty. It knows it's empty. So I'm going to go ahead open up the cinder. I'm going to spray just a little touch of Pam on it. Probably doesn't need it, but I just want to put it on there just so uh, I was going to put it on there just in case. Don't know. Probably doesn't need it, but who knows. So I'm going to go ahead and put my fish on. There's two, could probably fit four pieces on, is about it. There we go. So, four decent sized pieces of fish. I'm going to go ahead and close her up. And I'm going to hit yes, start cooking. And there you go. It's starting to go. Okay, so now it's cooking. Heated it up to it's up to 97. It's heating up pretty quick too. It's telling me it's going to take about 23 minutes. All right, I'll see you guys back in 23 minutes. So far, so good, so easy. Well, there you go, guys. You heard hear the alarm going on. It's telling me cookie is done. Hit OK. I'm going to go ahead and open this thing up. See what it looks like. Whew. I'm going to get a little close up of that. Because it doesn't look very good right now. But I'm going to go ahead and crank this bad boy up to sear it. So I'm going to take this fish off and wipe the plate dry like it tells you to. And then we're going to sear it. I'll be right back. Alright guys, that thing's moving right along. It's only been about three minutes and it's already up to 400. And just like normal sous vide cooking, I'm going to go ahead and pat this fish dry so we can get a really good sear because we don't want it to be uh, steaming up the moisture. I want to get a quick sear on it. Alright, it's at 410, starting to slow down. So, I'm going to go ahead and pat it dry really good. 418. It's, like I said, three or four minutes and it's up to sear temp, so it's not too bad. Alright, it's ready to sear. Gonna go ahead and put this on. I probably should have waited to press that until I got the fish on, huh? Because it's doing a countdown. So I probably did that wrong. Oh well. Let's get it in there anyway. You can probably do it again. So this lid's pretty heavy, so you don't have to push it or anything. You should be able to just... So it looks like it gives you about 45 seconds or so to sear. Which, we're about that. Right about now, because I lost about 30 seconds. Let's take a look. Look at that. Pretty nice. That looks good. I'm going to go ahead and shut this off now. I think I'm happy with that sear. Go ahead and get this off. Take a taste. Now you can see the size issue here. So it's not meant to feed a big family, that's for sure. But it'd work good for you know a couple or family of three. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a taste. Take a taste of this one right here. See what it looks like inside. Well, it definitely is nice and flaky. It's not overcooked. Mm mm mm. Mm, it's good. 
I tell you. It actually turns out pretty good. It's definitely not overcooked. It's definitely juicy. It's got a decent sear. I think I like it so far. Check it out guys, Cinder Sensing Cooker. Smart griddle grill. Alright, all I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the dinner. I'm gonna be playing around with this on some more videos. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Check out our new podcast, Fire and Water Cooking Podcast, anywhere podcasts can be found. And I will see you again on the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.